We are the first ones here. I did not want to miss the fireworks. <clears throat> what fireworks? Yeah, it's nothing, nothing. Okay. How come for years spouses weren't invited to your office Christmas party and now we are? You were always invited. You just never wanted to be here. Well, that hasn't changed. Well, what has changed is that spouses are required to be here. Why? Because when you're not with us, our lives are incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> and you make the evenings better. Fine, it's because Dave and I were in charge this year, and Dave told everyone spouses had to be here. Thanks a lot. Well, I'm sorry, but it's all part of the master plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see, every time Tina talks about her husband Doug, she uses the dumb guy voice. You know. The voice every spouse uses to describe what her husband is saying. <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with the dumb guy voice. What I was confused about was the term master plan. Well, we get Doug in here, and then we tell him that she does that. Huh? You're still missing the plan. And then they get into a big fight. <laughs> Have you even met Doug? No. <laughs> well, then why in the world would you want It's because I hate... Tina! <laughs> Since when? Last year's Christmas party. You see, she was the one that told me that the gifts for the name exchange was supposed to be under $20 and be a gag gift. So there we were at the party. Everybody's exchanging gifts with the names that they chose. Give me all nice bottles of wine, fine scotch, gift cards, what have you. And there I am, giving Mr. Barkenhoopin the potty putter golf game. What? You sit on a toilet, you lay down a mat, and you try and put the ball into a hole. That's stupid. It was supposed to be stupid. I mean, it wasn't, but that's what she said. So this year, <laughs> this year is payback. Payback? Do you really think he's going to care that she uses that voice sometimes when talking about him? Not sometimes. Always. Always. And yeah, he'll be upset. It's very offensive when you women use that voice to describe us, making us dumber than we are. I mean, we're not that we're dumb, but... Uh, please. It's no worse than you using the nagging wife voice. I'm not familiar with that. Oh, yes. <laughs> you always use his voice when talking to your friends about us. I know. Okay, mister, I gave my boss the potty putter. Hey, <laughs> Tina is the one. Hey, hey, guys, is Tina and her husband here yet? Not yet. Where is Jill? At home. <laughs> home? You were supposed to tell Tina that all spouses had to be here. I did. I didn't make anybody else bring their wife. Oh. Great. Oh. Idiot. Well, now I'm the only spouse here. Oh, no. No, my husband's here too. Oh. I thought spouses had to come. Oh, Tina, this is my wife, Erica. Erica, Tina. Hi, Hi. nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, did you say, I'm sorry, what's your husband's name again? Doug. He's parking the car. Oh, oh good, good, good. You know, you talk about him so much, I cannot oh. wait to meet him. Oh, uh, well, you know, I told him to use the valet parking. Really? What, yeah. did he, what did he say about that? Oh, he was all like, Ooh, why would I pay somebody $20? <laughs> I can't really do it myself. <laughs> of course, that doesn't stop him from going through the drive through right? Then uh -huh. he's all like, Oh, McRib's only here for a limited time. <laughs> Dog, it is so great to meet you. You should know that Tina talks about you all the time. And you should also know that oh, she yeah? uses a certain What does she say? <laughs> so, I mean, what she says is... <laughs> Whoa! Wait a minute. What does she sound like when she talks about me? Uh, I get it. I get it. Uh... Get what? 
Well, Tina found out what we were going to do, and so that's why you're talking like that. Like what? Well, you're using the dumb guy voice. What? When? How dare you talk to my husband that way? Uh, he's using the voice. Dave, help me out here. <laughs> Wait. You think I'm dumb? I'm the CFO of a Fortune 500 company. My Christmas bonus was six figures. How much do you make, smart guy? Uh, yeah. Okay. I graduated summa cum laude from Princeton, Mr. <laughs> UW Platteville. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, man. Now, come on, really. This is a real voice. <laughs> yes, it is. In fact, it's the real voice I use on the Fox Business Channel and Squawk Box when they invite me on to explain the theory behind economies of scale. Economies on scale? <laughs> economies of scale, chucklehead. They are factors that cause the average cost of producing something to fall as the volume of its output increases. The main driver behind corporate, corporate gigantism in the 20th century and the fundamental principle behind Henry Ford's revolutionary assembly line. They continue to be the spur to many mergers and acquisitions today. <laughs> Mr. I'm smart because I only play Powerball and the jackpot is really big. <laughs> How's that working out for you anyway? Glenn. And I think you owe Doug an apology. Me? Yeah, yeah, you, Glenn, who did all this by yourself. Dave? Yeah. Don't Dave me. You've got a real dark side. You know what else has a dark side? Economies of scale. They're called the diseconomies of scale. Eventually, uh, in implementing the cost of uh, the economies of scale incurs a cost, and eventually this cost may come to outweigh the savings because of the larger volume required to run and manage the scale. Bitch. <laughs> Look, I, she is the one that started this whole thing with the body putter. Oh, that was just a joke. It doesn't give you the right to insult my husband. Look, I am sorry that every wife uses that dumb, um, the, the, the voice that makes every husband sound stupid. I should not be held responsible for you having the voice. Stupid. <clears throat> The complexity of the diseconomies of scale incurs a cost, and eventually this cost may come to outweigh the savings gain from a greater scale. In other words, economies of scale cannot be cleaned forever. But I'm sure a smart guy like yourself understood all that, didn't you, numb nuts? Come on, Doug. Let's just go. Good thing I didn't use a valet. No, no, Doug, Tina, please don't leave. If anything, we should go. Uh, no, really, I don't think we could even enjoy ourselves anymore. Can I interest anybody in an appetizer? Ooh, don't mind if I do. Oh, come on!